Have you ever seen this website? Hewley.io's website cost upwards of $80,000 to design and build. It's won multiple awards and the internet is freaking out over it. And the reason is because of this really cool animated top hero section. This animated light beam that pours onto the product. This gentle hover effect that follows my mouse and exposes the interface. This has caused the internet to pop their lids. And all of this was created using a technology called WebGL, which stands for Web Graphic Library. This is a fancy schmancy JavaScript API developer thing that designers like you and I usually could not approach until now. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate this effect as well as this one, this one, and this one, writing zero lines of code in just a few minutes using a new amazing tool called Unicorn Studio. Unicorn Studio is the new kid on the block out here on these mean design streets. And this is not a sponsored video. I signed up for the wait list, finally got access, and then freaking fell in love with it. I think you're going to fall in love with it too. Why? Because it's going to allow you to create effects, motion, and interactivity without a single line of code. And the best thing is that you can export it and actually put it on your site, whether it's Framer or Webflow or WordPress or whatever you're using, and it has the lightest footprint ever. We're talking about a handful of kilobytes to use any of of this interactivity that you're creating because it's all code. It's all JavaScript, which is rad. So I encourage you to sign up for your free account, get on that wait list, get access, and you'll have access to your dashboard, just like me, just like this. Notice I have a bunch of projects I've been working on and a bunch of templates to start from. One of those is that Hewley laser that we'll talk about later. But for now, let's start with a new project, a blank slate. Let's do the obligatory UI walk around. It's very, very simple. If you've ever used any sort of design tool ever, you have a layers panel over here on the left hand side tools on the top responsive sizes here export settings and your contextual properties panel down the right hand side that means if i click on an item i'm going to get properties that show up here that are different depending on what i'm clicking on that's it it's that easy and notice that as we have started our new project here it's telling us hey uh you don't really have anything do you want to maybe add some stuff like a 3d shape or some text and to that i say yes unicorn studio i would like to add some text and a shape those you can either add here or from the tools up above let's just add one thing really quickly like a piece of text and we can grab this and do something like WebGL rocks, that's great. I'm gonna increase the size that is allowed for this piece of text, line it up there, and why don't we just increase the size uh, of the actual font itself. There we go, we're just gonna center it, boom, drag and drop, super easy to use, right? So far, not impressive, we just, <laughs> we're just, adding stuff, we're adding some text to it. Now, we can start adding things like shapes, 3D shapes, images, but we can also add effects. And this is where Unicorn Studio really, really shines. The effects are shown up here in the top right-hand corner. Notice this little icon. This is gonna be a library of really cool effects that we can apply to anything. And when I say anything, I mean anything. You can apply effect to a shape, to text, to backgrounds, to images, to whatever you're doing, you can apply these effects. And you have things like filters or being able to distort things in certain ways or blur things in certain ways or light things in certain ways, stylize them, some miscellaneous stuff, and then even create something custom. Why don't we go over to distort or blur because that one's really, really fun. And what I'm gonna do is just drag this and uh, actually just click it like that. I'm gonna add that diffuse. Now notice it diffused it across the entire project, right? I can press play and we'll get a little bit of this kind of like grainy diffusion. Is that what you want? Do you want just like this grainy thing? That doesn't seem like I have a lot of control or interactivity. It just seems like I'm building a video. No, there's more than that. Let's take this diffusion and actually drop it onto the layer here of text like that. Now, anything we do with this diffuse specifically and only going to affect the text itself. Notice I get some little controls here. I can actually grab that diffusion. I can minimize it, maximize it like that, but I can also come over here and I have some contextual properties that I can start to edit. What do we want to do here? Well, we are all currently on the design tab. We could pause the effect, play the effect, or we can jump over to events, but we'll do that later. Let's do some simple design work, shall we? We can position that diffuse. We can change the amount of diffusion that's happening. We can change the amount of grain, like maybe we want it to be really grainy, the direction, 
great. We can do some mixing, like change the radius of things. Look at that, we're starting to bring the radius down. That's kind of nice. And now it's only diffusing over a certain area, but that's not really gonna do much for us until we say, hey, why don't you track my mouse a little bit? Now, as I start to move my mouse around, I get actual diffusion and interactivity. Let's give it a little momentum, track my mouse even more, maybe change the easing to in, out, quad, mess with the radius a little bit. Look at this, now we can pan back and forth across our text and we get this really cool effect that's only affecting our text, right? If we have other objects outside of it, it will not affect it because it's kind of layered or masked inside of my text. Let's add another object and have some different kind of fun with it. Why don't we bring in a 3D object, maybe something like uh, this looks like it could be fun, a cool triangle, a 3D shape here. And notice that it also has the ability to play because everything has the ability for baked in animation, right? It doesn't look like much right now, but if I press play, you'll notice I get this really cool glass effect and I'm still able to scroll around and get that diffusion across my element. This is already pretty cool. Let's grab this 3D shape, shall we? And uh, why don't we play with it just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna change the size of it and tilt it around a little bit like that. Now that looks like we're building a kind of a little bit more of an interactive layout. Now we get some very different options over here on the right hand side. We're able to change things like position and access and shape. Okay, so we could switch. We could scale it up and down right here using the sliders. I like that. Um, maybe we kind of twist it a little bit. I think that's a little bit more interesting than your boring old triangle. A little bit of twist. That's nice. Let's round it mm, a little bit like that. And okay, cool. Now what we can do is uh, and we can set this to be a repeater. We'll talk about that more in a second, but notice this. If I set this to 2D XY, we get repetition in different planes. We're getting real crazy, real, real quick. So let's just do it. I think let's go all the way, 3D. We are <laughs> repeating in so many different ways. Spacing, let's make it a little bit more like this. Let's bring that down that initial scale of it so there's a lot more of these guys. I think that's a little bit more interesting. Like that a lot. Maybe increase the spacing of them. Got it, we still get that diffusion happening, awesome. And then we can start to work with the refraction or the reflection. How much reflection do we want? Do we want it to be really, really reflective? Do we want it to maybe be a little bit less or a little bit more opaque and see-through? This is the power of Unicorn Studio where you have a rough idea and you actually get to get into a platform and be creative. You can play, you can explore, start layering things, grouping things, moving sliders together until you get an effect that you really, really like. Let's take a look at another example. We have this particleizer version here. And really, if I was to take off all of the mumbo jumbo and the spice, I can remove the retro screen, Remove these things, remove the shatter particle, remove the replicate. All you have is a piece of text on the screen. And all we did was add that replicator. It's moving it from left to right. It's animating it. Then we went in and we found an effect called a shatter, right? So we took a shatter. We added that there. Boom, there it is sitting in the middle. And we just dialed in all of the elements for that shatter, right? All of the positioning and the amounts, and we just dialed them in over here. And then we went ahead and added in a beam. Where'd you get that beam? That's super easy. We just came up here and we looked for beam. There's your light ray beam. We could bring in another one even. Look at that, that looks even cooler. And you can either hide that one, keep that one, but we just went in and started dialing these things in, right? Like maybe the purple's not really jiving well with the orange. Let's do something that's a little bit more on the yellow side of things. Let's bring the scale of this one up and down. Let's bring the opacity of it. I just want to glow a little bit. There it is. And then we can change things like the angle and whatnot and boom, there you go. You're just starting to add elements on top, right? And then you added in retro screen, which is another effect. I came in here and looked for retro screen. There it is, added it in. But now we have a second one and it's super intense. But again, just by adding these things in, you get all of this fun that you never got before, right? Okay, so this is where the power is. This is where the magic is playing with stuff. Let's take a look at another example because I'm super in love with it. We'll take a look at this appearance effect, right? Now, this is where we start to get into events, different things you can do, right? You'll notice we, what do we have? We have a mouse effect that's just following me around. We have an image that is 
combined with a 3D shape. All that is is a 3D shape. Slap the image in there. It blends the two together, which is super fun. Got a piece of text with the replicate on it. And if you look at the replicate, notice like there is that entrance animation that's happening specifically with that replicate. So I'm going to grab that replicate, come over to the top and click over to events. Notice we can do appear events, scroll events, hover events. We have an appear event and it is affecting the spacing. All the things that I can, how many replicates or the angle or the position or the speed, it's affecting the spacing of it. The starting value is zero. That means that there's going to be zero space between the replication. And then very, very quickly, we're going to move it to 74% of spacing with a little bit of timing, duration, and delay. And you can choose where you'd like it to happen. Let's preview it and take a look at it. That looks pretty good. Why don't we add another one in here? So instead of spacing, why don't we mess with angle and the starting value will be zero. Let's just do something wonky like 214. And let's delay this thing quite a bit, right? Notice as we do that, we're moving our timeline around. So first the spacing is gonna happen, then the angle is gonna happen or excuse me, the scale is going to happen. And as we move it further out, and we can even just grab and drag and move these around in our timeline, then our angle animation is going to happen. Let's try it again. Okay, we got spacing, and then the angle happens. Weird. So now we're just playing and affecting things using events, scroll events, hover events, appearance events. And then all we have to do is embed it into our site, which I'll show you right now. Let's go back to our homemade example. Let's say we have it exactly where we want it and we want to export this and get it onto our website. We got a couple of different options here. I'm going to come up to export. You can see we can export this thing out as an image if you just want the static version of it, which is pretty helpful in case you don't want to load this interaction on maybe your mobile version. Grab the static version of it, slap it up there, swap those out on mobile. You can grab a full video format, export it that way, but I like to grab the embed. Now here, you can copy the the project ID if you want. You can grab the actual iframe or the embed code. For me, I'm a framer guy, so all I'm gonna do is copy this URL for the framer component. I'm gonna come over to framer and I'm just going to command V or paste in. Now notice here, it's telling us, you know, that we have a Unicorn Studio embed and it's gonna render in the preview, not, uh, not in our preview, but in the published site, and that we need a project ID. Where do we get that project ID? ID. Well, we grab it right there, come back, and we're just going to paste it right in here like that. Boom. Now it's all set. I'm going to bring this element. I'm going to cut it and then come into my project inside the hero section. I'm going to paste it right here and I'm going to set it to absolute position. And let's just bring up the size of it like this. Make sure we center the whole thing. Great. And oh, let's go back grab the corner of this, bring it down. Now let's center it like that and like that. Great, now it's sitting in the center. We won't be able to see it in our preview. We're gonna have to publish, update, and we can preview it out here on the web. Just like that, boom, we get this amazing interactivity here. And yes, when you're using a free plan, you can cannot get rid of the badge down there. It's gonna say made with Unicorn Studio. Now there's some ways you could probably work around that. Like I could grab this and extend it out and make sure that it's hiding behind the section below it if I wanted to. It's a little bit sneaky, not recommending that, but boom, just like that. Now we have our beautiful Unicorn Studio thing. Now, I would highly recommend supporting them. Again, this is not a sponsored video, but if you wanna get the full embed, it's like a couple of bucks a month, but it's well worth it if you are building websites for clients, getting paid for websites, to be able to have this on your website with just a couple of clicks. It is not in a video or heavy. It loads really, really snappy. Check it out, load it back up. Boom, there it is like that. Now, I didn't get rid of the rest of the, uh, the layout here, if I want that to actually sit behind stuff, I can. I can make sure that the Z index is lower probably. Publish it, sorry, one more time. Update it like that inside of Framer and load it up and now we get the rest of our layout. So again, it has all the capabilities to do what you want it to do and that's Unicorn Studio. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications when more videos like this one come out. Also, check the description for some helpful links like a link to Unicorn Studio. Remember, this isn't a sponsored video. Uh, I just really love it. And so if you click that link, go sign up, get on the wait list. And if you build something really, really cool in Unicorn Studio, why don't you leave me a comment with that public URL so I 
I can check it out, maybe even review it here on the channel. Can't wait to see your stuff. Hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things. We'll see you in the next one.